for almost two decades, it seemed an agreement would never get off the ground. But finally, the EU and the US have landed on a deal. We had an excellent meeting among friends and allies. And this meeting started uh, with a breakthrough on aircraft. Back in 2004, the US complained to the World Trade Organization that EU financial support to Airbus was unfair. The bloc returned fire, lodging its own legal battle against Washington's subsidies to Boeing. And so began the longest running dispute in WTO history. But on Tuesday, the EU and US resolved to stop pulling punches and have lined up an agreement that will see all future passenger aircraft developed without causing what's being called harm to the other side. The deal was announced during President Joe Biden's first EU-US summit in Brussels. I have a very different view than my predecessor did. So I'm looking forward to talking to you all about what we're about to do and, and, uh, and what it's to be. During the 17-year tit-for-tat trade tussle, which escalated during Donald Trump's presidency, the US slapped $7.5 billion in tariffs on EU goods. The bloc, in turn, imposed duties worth $4 billion on US imports. Those sanctions were suspended for four months in March as the parties returned to the negotiating table. Now, they'll be shelved for five years while a lasting agreement is finalised. The uh, agreement we have found now really opens a new chapter in our relationship because we move from litigation to cooperation on aircraft and that after almost 20 years of disputes. It could also mean the launch of a more profitable partnership on both sides of the Atlantic. Melinda New Sephora, TRT World. Now, Carol Lanou joins us from Brussels for more. Uh, he's CEO of the Centre for European Policy Studies. Thank you for joining us on the show. Um, now, I want to talk to you about this dispute between the US uh, and Europe, essentially over their air airlines. It's taken 17 years to resolve this, but what is the core issue here? Are these air, 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 aircraft manufacturers, both of them, benefiting from essentially illegal government support? Yeah, that is the big question. What is illegal for government support? Of course, in the European Union, we have rules on state aids, but at international level, we have the WTO, which has rules on subsidies, and both parties, the EU and the US, have brought this case forward to, first of all, to the arbitration panel, then to the dispute settlement system, which is an organization of the WTO. Um, in both cases, uh, there has been a decision that each other should pay a kind of a penalty for illegal subsidies. And this has been going on now for 17 years. And the outcome of today's summit of basically the first meeting of Biden and Brussels today with the European Union is that they have come to an agreement, a form of a provisional agreement by which they will solve this problem or they will settle it. It's not finally done yet, but they will agree, let's say, that both parties will give up the claims on the other side. Now, Carl, I'll, I'll come back to the, the ramifications of that. But first of all, let's just step back and look at this deal now. Um, do you think that this is kind of the harbinger of a new era of cooperation between, between the US and its European allies? Certainly, the trip of the US President Biden to Brussels with the NATO summit yesterday, where also the Turkish president was present, and the meeting with the EU leaders today was extremely important. But this is only one of the many different issues which have to be settled between the EU and the US. You may remember that under Trump, several forms of tariffs were raised on several forms of European products, mainly going from wine to cheese to other elements. And on top of that, we have very, so to say, asymmetric tariffs between the EU and the US for, for example, cars, where the US has a tariff of 5% for European cars, whereas the EU has a tariff of 10% for US produced cars, take a, take a Tesla. So there are many things which have to be discussed. So I think this is only the beginning 
of a more intense and a more in-depth negotiation between both parts to come to a more open trade between the EU and the US. Don't forget that three years ago, there was an important meeting between Juncker and Trump in July 2018, and they agreed at that time to come to a tariff-free trade between the EU and the US, except for cars. But at the end, three years later, you see where we are. So there is still a lot to do. And if you compare this to other regions in the world, like Canada, Japan, Australia, Korea, where we have trade agreements, we do not have a trade agreement with the United States. The TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, which was discussed under Obama, was shelved. And so far, Biden has not used the word TTIP yet. What they discussed today, or what they agreed today, that in addition to shelving the disputes on the subsidies on the airlines, they would also set up a Trade and Technology Council, which is only a loose cooperation entity to stimulate trade, above all in technological products, so in services between both sides. But that remains to be seen what that will be. Okay, very quickly now, as you mentioned, the WTO has already ruled in both those complaints. Now, both sides have decided to hold fire, essentially. But the WTO ruling remains. And there are other countries that also are hoping to build their own aircraft. Do you see the, the EU and the US now rolling back these subsidies? That's what I think, let's say, I have agreed to say to shelf them, at least provisionally, we have to see the details of the agreement, because, of course, it is a legal procedure between, uh, say, before the WTO and between the EU and the US. How this can exactly be done, that remains to be seen. But, of course, we know, let's say, that aircraft is one of these very, I mean, important technological sectors which we have in the Western world and which we only the EU and the US have. Of course, we have a small manufacturer in Brazil. And China is trying to build aircraft, but so far it's essentially only the EU and the US, but thanks to subsidies. So it is indeed a point, let's say, that the others may be watching and may have to agree, let's say, on what the EU and the US agree amongst them. So just a first step, but a very important one nonetheless. Thank you, Carol Lano, for your analysis on the show.